Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the course of this video lesson, I'll be solving different practice questions that cut across different topics in chemistry, specifically for the JAMP exam. Now, if you are just joining this community and you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, do well to click the subscribe button to this channel and also share all of these videos with your friends because it will help you all improve greatly in the subject called chemistry. Let's get into the first practice question, which says, an element used in the production of matches is, now this must be noted. It must be noted here that the element which is used as an ingredient in burning matches production is simply called sulfur so the answer to this question is option d sulfur which is symbolized as s now moving forward let's get into the next practice question and it says the iopac nomenclature of the compound this is the compound is that means they are asking us to name this compound and it is very easy first of all for you to name a compound you have to understand the family to which that compound belongs to and in the look of things this compound is an ester this compound is what an ester and this is how the ester is spelt okay not the normal ester you know okay now it must be noted here that esters are also called alkanoids esters are also called alkanoids that means if you observe all the options ended with no it no it no it so if they tell you that this particular compound is an ester which is also regarded to be called an alkanoid next thing you have to note here is the general formula for esters because it will help us solve this question and we will tell you that this compound i'm seeing here is actually an ester now watch this is the general formula for esters and the general formula of esters is arrow c o o arrow so in the look of things i believe you can see two arrow group now you can see two arrow group now each of them we call them alkyl groups the arrow groups are called what alkyl groups now let's try to understand this general formula and incorporate it into the explanation of this compound now the first arrow you are looking at here this first arrow signifies this group which starts from here and ended here i believe you are following me signifies this group which started from here and ended here and also the other one which is coo signifies this group which you are looking at which tells you that okay this compound is actually an ester which is also an alkanoid whereby this last part signifies the other arrow i believe you are following me and it is actually very easy do you get now first of all you have to now know how to name the alkyl groups okay please listen it's not hard it is very easy now let's try to name this alkyl group first of all let me tell you tell you guys something now are you not seeing two carbons here for instance for instance you see something like this two carbon and i've told you that it is an alkyl group remember what is an alkyl an alkyl is a derivative of alkane this is an alkyl what is an alkyl an alkyl is an alkane that lost hydrogen that is what we call an alkyl so for instance now we have an alkyl group with two carbons with what you are seeing here with what you're because i call this one an alkyl and also call this one an alkyl i'm just explaining so that when you see this question in your exam you'll be able to answer it without even drawing structures because you know the jam exam no time so you have to very fast as you are solving practice questions so i want to just tell you things to note when you're about solving questions under naming esters it's actually very easy so looking at this compound you can see looking at this group you can see it has two carbon and normally an alkane with two carbon they call it ethane an alkane with one carbon it is called methane you know you call it meat two carbon compound x like ethane three carbon compound prop like propane like that like that so this one is it has two carbons so we know it is called an an we know it is called ethane but since it's an alkyl group we call it ethyl are you getting me now same applies to this since that's two carbon since it's an alkyl group we call it what an ethyl do you understand it's actually very easy so now how do we name this compound please for you to be able to name an ester please name the ending part first you start naming the ending part this is what i mean okay for you to be able to name this command look at what you do class it is very easy you name this part 
you name this part as an alkyl group the this last part, this is how it works, please. When you see the compound, that's how you have to name it in your exam. The part after the second oxygen, that's what you name first and as an alkyl group. So looking at this, this one has two carbons. So what do we call it? Ethyl. Whereby you then name every other part together. Do you understand? You then name this other part together. Please, that's how it works. Follow the trend. You name this part before you name every other part. Okay, and know that it will end with no it because it is an ester. So this is called a tile. So how many or how many carbons are you having here? One, two, three. So what do you call it? You know, we have three carbon compounds. So it's prop. Do you understand? A three carbon compound is called prop. So basically, since it has three carbon, and we know that esters are also called alkanoate, so we'll call it propanoate. Do you understand? So we've named this part to be tile, and this other part to be propanoate. So the name of this compound is called ethyl propanoate. Let's check the option if we see something like ethyl propanoate. I believe I've seen it here, which is option C. Very easy. It is very easy, not difficult. So please, when you see compounds like this, name this first part as an, as an alkyl group and name every other part together. Are you getting me now? That's how it works. So let's progress. So number three says they gave us a sub energy level diagram. And then I said that the diagram represents the electron sub level four. It's very easy. First of all, you just count how many, because all these things here, they are called electrons. So how many electrons can you see here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm having eight electrons. So which elements has eight electrons? That's what he's talking about. Which element here has eight electrons? And how do you do that? You know, for in all of them are neutral. Do you understand? All of them are neutral. So for a neutral atom, proton number equals what now? Electron number. And how do you get your proton number? Just count. Just count the element. Count the element in like you are counting it in a periodic table. Let's go. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. So I'm trying to tell you that you count. We know we have eight electrons. So you count. If you want to count now, which element we have eight electrons? Which element will be number eight in the periodic table? That's the point I'm trying to make. So hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Oxygen is number eight. So oxygen is the answer to this question. No stress. Okay, that's what they're asking. All of them are all neutral. So you count the electrons and then count the elements in the periodic table and then get your answer, which is option c very very easy so let's get into the next practice question this is the question is very easy the question says 0 0.05 moles per dm cube know this already is concentration hcl is neutralized by 25 cm cube naoh full stop if the volume of the acid is 32 cm cube what is the concentration of the base actually very easy when i've seen the word neutralized i'm going to use a formula which is the titration formula and i think in one of my videos i explained this and the formula is simply c a v a over c b v b is equal to n a over n b and in that video lesson i explained what each of the parameters mean c a means concentration of acid v a means volume of acid c b means concentration of base v b volume of base N A numbers of moles of acid, N B numbers of moles of base. I'm going to explain everything for you. And this question is between two compounds. This is an acid, and also this is the base. So let's react them together. When HCl reacts with NaOH, you know this is a. To have more understanding about chemistry calculations and solving all of these type of questions. I already have them on the chemistry masterpiece, okay, which is calculations and keynotes in chemistry. So if you are preparing to write the jam exam, this book is very, very important for you. Now, for more information, getting the chemistry masterpiece, do well to direct message me via my WhatsApp number. It will be on the screen. Neutralization reaction, where you already know what we are to get. We are to get a salt and also we are to get water. So what becomes the salt here? Very easy. You already know that sodium is positively charged. OH called the hydroxyl group is negatively charged. You already know that hydrogen is positively charged and chlorine is negatively charged. So what becomes the compound we are to get? What becomes the salt? You already know that according to a scientist called Charles D. Augustus Coulombs, like charges repair, unlike charges attract, so this is sodium and this is chlorine. So definitely they have 
different charges so they will what attract each other sodium cannot attract hydrogen because they have the same charges so sodium and chlorine are trying to form the salt sodium chloride plus water h and oh you know when h and oh combines together definitely we are to get water do you understand h2o h2o so definitely we have to get water and in the look of things this reaction is balanced okay it is balanced because we have one hydrogen here we have another hydrogen here making it two hydrogen here we have just two hydrogen hydrogen is balanced chlorine we have one chlorine here here as well we have one chlorine sodium we have one sodium we have one sodium oxygen we have one oxygen and also we have one oxygen it is balanced so let's solve this question together and what are they asking they're asking also for the concentration of base which is c b so how do we solve it very easy so let's solve together okay guys let us make the concentration of base c b subject of formula so making this subject what are we to have c b will not be equal to we want to make this a cross multiply so everything here will times dividing n a and n b i believe you know what to, how to make subject of formula okay it's very easy so c b we're making the subject everything here will times so we're having c a okay times v a times n b over okay v b times n a is very very easy what becomes cb very easy class what is the concentration of acid they gave us initially 0 0.05 more per dm cube of the acid the cl so concentration of acid ca becomes 0 0.05 times what becomes volume of acid they mentioned it they said if the volume of acid is 32 so volume of acid is 32 cm cube times what's the number of moles of base okay very easy now how do we get this you look at your reactant side this is the base this is the acid what are the numbers standing in front of them remember i think in one of my video lessons i told you when you when you are not seeing anything in front of a compound just know that there is an invisible one do you understand so there is one here though we are not seeing it that's how it works please so the number of moles of base is one divided by what's the volume of base it was given as well is neutralized by 25 cm cube of what now sodium hydroxide so you see this volume of base so here become 25 okay times what's the number of moles of acid as well so a number of acid was standing one okay so when we hit a calculator what becomes the uh, concentration of the base very easy so we are having 0 0.05 times 32 times one that's 1.6 I had up here to be 1.6 okay so 1.6 divided by 25 because 25 times 1 is 25 so we're having zero okay 0 0.064 okay concentration of the unit is more per dm cube so we're having 0 0.064 more per dm cube let's check if we have the answer here wow option d is the answer very very easy without stress okay so let's get into the next practice question and the next practice question says how many cations will be produced from a solution of this compound it's very easy first of all what are cations cations are positively charged elements do you understand and most of the times cations are metals because all metals are positively charged so looking at the metal here actually the metals here are potassium and aluminium okay this is how they exist ionically when you write the ions this is how they exist but what they are asking else how many cations how many positively charged elements are we seeing here there are two please these guys are radicals do you understand they are not cations most of the times they are negatively charged actually so these are the two cations potassium and aluminium so the answer to this question becomes option c very easy the next practice says dash gas has a bonding matrix smell i believe from my first question you can answer this question is very easy what gas has a bonding matrix where it is solved for but in the form of what so2 please take note okay solve for four oxide do you understand you know we call co2 carbon four oxide so definitely you have to call so2 sulfur four oxide so that gas can be used to trap alkaline pyrogalol or heated copper please take note there is a gas that is used to trap trap can also be called absorbed do you understand and it is oxygen gas o2 now the next is dash catalyst is used in contact process the catalyst is v2o5 and the catalyst is vanadium 5 oxide okay vanadium 5 oxide please take note and contact process is the process used to the production of h2so4 which is an acid do you understand now the chemical formula for quicklime is cao calcium oxide this is quicklime cao and the last question here 
Question number 10 says, the main oil of aluminum is, they call it uh, bauxite. Okay, bauxite is the main oil for aluminum. And bauxite has a chemical formula which is Al2O3.2H2O. Meaning that this compound bauxite has water of crystallization in it. And this is water of crystallization which is 2H2O. So I believe now all of this concept is clear. Meanwhile, if you are just joining this community and you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, do well to click on the subscribe button and also share these videos with a friend because it's going to help you guys improve greatly in chemistry. I'll be making more and more video lessons that cut across chemistry and as well biology to help you guys improve. So if you like this video, please share this video, like this video so that other persons can have the opportunity to see this video as well. Okay, so thanks for watching.